But we know I'm not the smartest person in the room, and that's unfortunately not saying much because I'm the only one in the room right now. Welcome back to the flannel. I'm Joe and this is the Lost Cause Ranch. For the past few months, we've been going about a little bit of a DIY project, I like to call it, and that is building our brand new shop. This one, we are inside here. And for today's portion of that process, we are continuing with the electrical, and attempting to play Sparky and getting the rest of those guys wired up along with our panel. We reach all new heights doing it. I got a few of the outlets wired in off camera before this video because I wanted to make my mistakes first and then look like an expert on camera because that's how you do. So the first thing I'm gonna do before we start running wire is take the handy dandy 100 foot tape. And we're gonna measure out our runs from the sub panel to each of our individual 220 outlets. Being the six gauge stuff is like 360-ish a foot. I wanna be right on our run distances. 10, 15 feet here and there a few times over adds up to more than I wanna throw away. Before we move on to this side of the shop and get these outlets wired in, Quick word from the sponsor of this video. And today's sponsor is Joe. Yes, me, unfortunately. And that is because I just bought these two rolls of six gauge wire for our 220 outlets. That's $400, that's $400. Ouch. I mean, I guess on the bright side, it was half the money of this stuff. In a little preparation, I went ahead and made up all our ground jumpers ahead of time that way we can just rock right through this now before we start in on this um let it be known that i'm an idiot and this probably isn't the way it should be done but it's the way i'm doing it this is by no means an in-depth tutorial on how to wire something because i'm not the guy to listen to this is so you guys can watch me stumble through another process in building a new land rover shop but with that said this is the end of this set of 110 outlets that are on a circuit so we'll only have one length of Romex. This is 12-2 going in to feed the outlets on this one. Every other one in the branch will have in and out for each circuit. So two wires in, two wires out. Might be a bit much for the table, but uh, as you can see, we just picked up another 500 feet of 12 2 from the old Menards. Uh, that's gonna put us at at least a thousand feet in here. It'll be neat to add it all up when I'm done. So we have our wire ran for the rest of the 110 outlets at ground level. Got everything stripped back and ready to pop some outlets on. All right, so this is not a lesson on how to wire things up. I'm just gonna point out a couple things I'm doing to make everything cleaner and easier to service in the future. Is that what you do? Do you service your electrical? But in case we need to do anything, I'm keeping everything the same. All our power into the outlet is coming in to the top and we're going out to the next set of outlets from the bottom. So on every outlet box, every outlet is wired up the same exact way. Even the single outlets, they're all coming into the top, but anything that feeds onto another outlet, into the top, out the bottom. And then on the ground, there's only one ground screw and you're not supposed to loop two wires onto one screw. So what we went ahead and did is we made up all these little jumpers like I showed before. And those go in here. And then we tie all three of these together. So then we just do that for like 4,700 outlets. Then we're done. Well, we got a little more work done. It is a tiny bit darker in here now, though. We only have one strip of lights. When I was running some of the wires for those guys there, I knocked this guy out of that row. And as it turns out, I'm pretty short, so I just, I, I just can't reach it. Um, we're gonna have to get the ladder back in there 
Okay, we got rovers in the yard. You'll notice there though, we have one less rover. We're working our way through not looking like a junkyard around here, but we'll get the camper in here and stand up on there so we can plug that guy in. But for the time being, you're just gonna have to deal with my mood lighting. You can see we got a mess of Romex coming in here. There is exactly 1,000 feet of the 12.2 in the shop. I guess this is the only point in time where I'm happy I didn't build a bigger one. And we also went ahead and wired up our AC compressor, not AC air compressor outlet. Um, the air compressor will be hardwired into this box. So we have our 10 gauge ran all the way across and back over to the panel here. And to keep everything straight, I have the ends of each run labeled with a good old Sharpie. Um, we're probably gonna waste a foot or two on each run by the time we feed it up through and into where it needs to be on the box, which sucks a little bit, but I'd rather do that than have an 80 foot run of wire be six inches short because yeah, I mean, there's not a good fix to that. Pretty much all we have left to do now is run our 220 outlets with this big six gauge. So this is six two, which is two. It's getting warm out. All the little motorcycles love going up and down the windy road. But no, this is six gauge. This will handle the 50 amp load that we have on all our 220 outlets. This was a little bit painful to buy, like I said earlier, but got to do it to make this place work the way it needs to work. So we're going to start off running from there to this one. Then we're going to run from there to that one. Then we got one long run to go up over to that back corner. And if my math is correct, which hopefully it is, so I don't have to spend any more money on wire, we should have plenty here. I kind of feel like a little kid just tossing all my scrap stuff on the ground. six gauge has been much easier to lay out and run than the 12 gauge stuff. I wouldn't have thought that, but uh, this is stranded, 12 gauge is solid, so it's a little stiffer, but this stuff's actually laying pretty flat. I'm not even sure what's going on in the world anymore. A couple days ago, it was almost 90 degrees out and now we're getting snow and enough of it that it is starting to stick. done right so i believe with that one it is now a wrap on the wiring well not all the wiring but of the outlets so far and it's still dark on that side of the shop mainly because i'm still short but up near the trusses we have our wiring ran to the outlets for the lights that will go across got our little romex bent up tucked away neatly at least i think neatly um I'm probably probably making you guys that do this for a living cringe a little bit, but hey, hey, I'm trying, trying my best here. Never done this before, but so far so good, mainly because we have no actual power going into the shop, but we do have the hobo fire going again because of mother nature not knowing what is going on. But now we are on to trying to get the box straightened out. 
I call them knockouts. So we're obviously a touch long on the cable coming in. And I'm gonna leave myself some extra because I don't know how to stretch this if I'm short. I'm gonna leave the actual hookup of the box and the meter to a real electrician um, because I don't really want to fry myself as it turns out. I'm gonna have them check over everything that we did in here as well. Because in case you didn't know, I'm not actually a professional. I know that probably wasn't evident with my highly skilled electrical work. Looks like the ticket. Looks like that one will work, so we'll pull it back apart, glue it in. So let that guy go for a couple hours right up against the wires here. Tiny bit more flexible because when they were 30 degrees, these guys were a tiny bit stiff. I just want to bend them a little easier. I kind of went back and forth quite a few times on my breaker layout, and I think this is what I landed on. We're starting at the bottom, working our way up. I have it separated out what is essentially the front of the shop by the garage door and the back of the shop, which would be like the wall where the P38 is and whatnot. And as of right now, the majority of our 110 circuits run to the front of the shop. So we are stacked up here. That is all these guys. We have one extra slot up top for future expansion on the front. Otherwise we have one, two, three, four, five, six on what we will call the back side of the shop. I don't suspect we'll add a ton more to the shop as we kind of future-proofed my needs in ahead of time, but you never know, so we have space. And as of right now, I'm gonna run all our wires on both sides up through the bottom. Our 12 gauge stuff will go through these. This is a Squirty home light panel, home, home line. This is a Squirty home line panel. They got this nifty little Romex holder instead of having individual clamps. We'll have pass through clamps for our six gauge as the six gauge won't fit through here. So all I need to do now is count how many knockouts to put in there. Then we'll feed them through the zigzag. I think those will look nice going in. Granted, all that will be covered up by the OSB when we put it up but it will be nice to keep everything organized. All right, so now I'm just gonna start feeding the wire into the panel. Um, this is gonna be kind of a time consuming deal. I'm gonna do it one at a time. Some people throw all the wires in, but I'm gonna load one. I have them labeled, and I also have the label maker with me. I'll label each circuit as we go. That way I don't get confused, which happens pretty easily anymore. So there's an idea of what we're going to keep doing. Pull them in at the bottom, strip them out, keep them somewhere on the same length there, run them up along the side, and then we're trying to keep it all neat and organized in there. And you can see I got the breakers labeled there. We'll label this one. This is for the office outlets. Next one will be the office lights. 
But yeah, so we'll just keep doing that. Try and keep it all neat and tidy and keep it looking straight in there. Uh, good thing about this, if we tuck them to the side, uh, we're creating some extra length of wire. If we ever need to change something up, we can. Hopefully we don't have to, but we'll just keep working our way through the mess laying here. This is definitely one of those jobs you just stick the headphones in and go at it. Not like it's hard, it's just uh, time consuming. Slowly but surely our mess is becoming less down below here. I mean, at least there, uh, we're, we're creating more of a mess on the ground. That's just the way she goes. We got our 30 amp air compressor one tied in. That was this 10 gauge wire. That was a little tougher to work with. We just have these six amp, amp six gauge wire ones to tie in now. These I suspect will be the hardest to do. So I left them for last, like always, because why not procrastinate? You know, if I probably would have done this in the correct order, it would have been easier. I could have knocked these out before I put the wire in, but we know I'm not the smartest person in the room. And that's unfortunately not saying much because I'm the only one in the room right now. So that one there completes the wiring inside the box, for now at least. Um, this one not hooked up, that's going to be future hoist right there. But when the time comes, we'll string that up along the trusses and drop down to the pump there. I am pleased with how that ended up. Time to somewhat straighten this mess out. I'm not sure how clean I'll get it. So I got it run and somewhat tucked in and organized going into the panel there. I'll probably continue playing with that and cleaning that up some. Not 100% happy with how that's sitting, but otherwise I think it's looking pretty good. Almost forgot the final piece. Now we're 100% locked in. Those guys just lock our Romex in place. Everything is nice and secure now. And now since I behave like a child, I gotta clean up my mess. Smart guy would've just had a garbage can here. Not me. Gotta pick up the scrap copper though. That's my retirement. So there we have it. My end of the wiring is done. At least I think so. You'll have to let me know how you guys think it turned out. Uh, be nice, this was my first time doing this. My extent of home electrical experience is replacing some outlets in a house and the outlets were already there. We gave her our best shot here. We'll find out soon when we hook these bad boys up to the actual power coming into the property and see if anything goes sparky sparky, which I don't think it will. I don't think it will. Took quite a bit longer than I was planning. I probably have 60 hours into this. Maybe not quite that much, maybe 40. I don't know. I don't have a regular schedule anymore, so time kinda escapes me. But we did throw in 1,350 feet of wire inside the shop total, 250 feet to run to the shop. So we have over a quarter mile in here. That's pretty neat. With that being said, appreciate you guys watching, appreciate you subscribing, and we will keep cracking on the Land Rovers around here, as well as getting the shop in order. It is starting to come along and will be super useful. Once the power is hooked up, we can actually do things in here. We also have some lights that got dropped off. And UPS just showed up with another package for the shop. Their new favorite place to leave stuff, right at the bottom of the driveway, right near the road. I guess it is better than where they used to leave it. Used to set it right there. No one would ever steal from there. So much safer there. Even though it's bright in here, 
will make it brighter and hopefully those lights won't be here next time. On another note, you can see I still have tremendous hammering skills.